How many of you know the, the B-I-B-L-E, the W-O-R-D-O-F-G-O-D is just plan A. There are no alternatives in here. Isn't that something? So let me ask you a question. If you were a person of faith, if you were a person of faith, how could you ever discuss something or present something that he didn't present? And call that faith. How could you do that? Now, you know, one of the reasons I'm so excited about the... uh, about the, um, (laughs) so excited. I guess I need to get more excited when I say I'm so excited. Uh, (laughs) So excited about the the daily broadcast is because, uh, um, you know, it'll have an opportunity for some different uh, viewership, especially if I keep it as exciting as it's been. (laughs) Really what YouTube is, is best for is controversy. You know what I mean? If you say something radical on YouTube, you know, it spreads like wildfire. Now I'm going to try, I'm going to try to avoid, you know, ever saying that, uh, uh, you know, that uh, Trump got screwed in the election. (laughs) Even though you'd have to be blind, crippled or crazy to not know that it was one cheating mess. That'll get you off in a hurry. But you know what what I believe God wants me to do is is to continue in that same excited vein that you've seen me in. (laughs) And begin to just really focus on what God's Word says. Now that sounds silly. Now we get that in this house. We get that in this house all the time. So, you know, it's not a, it's not a shock to you. But just to, just to say over and over what I said a while ago, how could, you, how could you talk about an alternative that was available from man if you're a minister of plan A? How could you offer somebody B through Z if he's A? Now, you do know that, that, that when that happens, that puts me and y'all on kind of thin ice. All of a sudden, all the people associated with somebody like that, you know, can come under, can come under some heat. But if you don't care, I don't. Well, I don't even care if you don't. I don't care. I don't care because I think people are worth it. And I think even the people who have, for one reason or another, allowed themselves to be compromised in their belief to the point where uh, they would say things today that they used to never say at all. And the word hadn't changed at all. But that's why... And I can see that now, even with what uh, Dr. Price wrote about the, uh, the little foxes as it pertains to faith. It doesn't take long. Unbelief starts subtly. Yes, it, does. it starts subtly. And that's why if you don't stay hard on yourself as it pertains to what you know to do, then uh, you'll find yourself doing what you never thought you'd do. Yeah. That's why it's important that we hear the Word of God, hear the Word of God. We hear the truth. We allow ourselves to be challenged. As, as I said, I believe in second service, I can remember early on, uh, early on when even after we'd started the church, and certainly before we started the church, when I'd hear uh, messages that were challenging, I'd be looking for excuses as, as to why I didn't do it. Or why I didn't believe it. Because that's the, you know, that's the, uh, that's the tendency of the flesh to look for a way to get out. Well, I know they can do that and I know they've done that, but you know, I've got this and I've got that and uh, blah, blah, blah. 
But the truth is, all that is, all that is, is an excuse. And uh, all of us have access to everything Jesus paid for. But uh, uh, the percentage is so small of people that will even pursue that. I'm persuaded, as I said, second service, you'd be better off pursuing it and losing than not pursuing it and trying to make an excuse as to why you didn't pursue it. Hmm? You know, it'd be just like, it'd be just like trusting God for healing and you die. A lot of people, a lot of people don't do that. A lot of people aren't willing to do that. A lot of people become frightened. Hmm? Well, the only reason you ever become frightened is because you don't understand the love of God. You don't understand the love of God. You know, death's been happening for thousands of years. So it isn't, shouldn't be something that we're afraid of. Yeah. Right. And if we've actually received him as our savior, it's nothing, it's nothing that should ever bring that kind of fear into our life. We, are, we ought to be able to lay there on our, uh, on our deathbed and uh, be grateful for what we've done. Huh? Yeah. Those that have been in our life right. and take that last breath. That's the way it ought to be. But if you don't constantly... Keep yourself aware of your responsibility as a believer. Then slowly but surely you'll become an unbelieving believer. And then when something happens, you'll act as if you can't figure out how in the world that happened. When this stuff's been happening for centuries. But those of us that will not take no for an answer. We will not take no for an answer. We will, we will become so focused on what God has done through the Lord Jesus that we will refuse plan B through Z. And you have to do that. You have to turn your back on that. Because yeah. everybody's going to encourage you to do B through Z. Yeah. No matter what the issue is. Physical, financial, relational, yeah. whatever it is. Whatever it is, there are alternatives. They're psychiatrists, they're psychologists, hmm? they're doctors, they're bankers. Everything, everything, there's an alternative. There's a plan B through Z. But God's plan A has never changed. And I believe it's never failed those who have received it by faith. But you have to make a decision, I'm not going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to trust God, period. Period. You have to make that decision. People say, well, you know, I'm just not there yet. You'll never get there until you start. You'll never get there until you set that as a goal. I'm believing when Jesus Jesus told the disciples what is called the... uh, the disciples' prayer or the Lord's prayer that when he said your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, that's exactly what God wanted done. He wanted there to be men and women in the earth who trusted him to be able to enjoy what was there here. Certainly, There is no darkness there, but there is darkness here. But as you're well aware, Jesus told Peter, I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom. I'm giving you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth that is disallowed in heaven... You can bind it with that key. And the key is a key, and the key is your mouth. The key is you saying what you know to be true. There's no sickness and disease in heaven. So there's a key that will keep that from being in your life. 
Now, people will say things like this. Well, you know, you know you're getting old and, you know, you know things happen. The Bible says that, that uh, you know, uh, your outward man is perishing. Yes, it does. But it also says your inward man is renewed day by day. And if you start living from the inside out, then you can just hang around probably as long as you can believe for. Hallelujah. There's a key to do that. The key is believing the word. There's no poverty in heaven. So you can can get shut of lack and poverty in your life with that key. There's no chaos in heaven. So you can take the key of peace and loose it into your life in the earth. He said, your kingdom come, your will be done. People want to know what God's will is? God's will is his word. His word is his will. His word is forever settled. So he doesn't change his will. Every generation has the same opportunity as the previous generation. And each individual in that generation will either choose life or choose death in whatever area we're talking about. And God will not, God will not, God will not do a thing to keep you from making your own personal choice. In Mark 11, 22, Jesus answered his disciples. They had uh, pointed out that the fig tree that he'd cursed had dried up. And he gave this big, long dissertation about what it was going to take. And he told him, have faith in God. Have faith in God. What had he said? What had he said to that fig tree? He said, no man eat fruit of you hereafter forever. And the moment he spoke that, from the roots, that fig tree began to die. Now, he didn't stop to check it out. He didn't stop. The disciples heard him, but he didn't stop and say, now, did you guys hear what I said? He just said it and kept walking. And when he came back the next day and they're all up, master, did you, that fig tree that you cursed, it's dried up from the roots. What did he say? Have faith in God. Now we could park there for just a moment. I've never parked there. I don't think like I'm like I'm going to park there right now. How did he do that? How did he do what he did? What did he use to do what he did? Pardon me? His words. His words. He used his words. Again, he didn't give some, you know, I'm the son of God and the Father's revealed to me that I've got the authority to do this. And no, he just, he just used his words. Yeah. First of all, he knew who he was, which puts him in a better position than most Christians do. Because they don't realize that they've been given power over all the power of the enemy. And how do you exercise that power? First and foremost, we've already said it with our words. He simply used his words. And then he backed it up with the next two verses. But what did he say? Have faith in God. Have faith in God. For whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, or be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things he says will come to pass, he will have whatever he says. So, I mean, he, he just said believe once. And he used say three times, I believe. For whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things that he says will come to pass, he will have whatever he says. What you say is really important. What you say is really important. Matter of fact, it's, uh, 
It's beyond important. It's critical. You know why? Because he just said right there that you'll have what you say. That you'll have what you say. That you'll have what you say. And even if you're in the habit of just saying things frivolously, you understand what I'm saying? You just, you say dumb stuff. You'll continue to say dumb stuff until dumb stuff will begin to show up in your life. And then you'll realize, wow, I really didn't, I really didn't mean that. But you know what? Your heart doesn't know that. You have deceived your own self with what you say to the point that when it comes to pass, you know exactly what happened. You're having what you said. Huh? Charles Capps was such a a master at teaching uh, on the words of your mouth. And when we first... When we first heard it, that was another one. Praise God for that, for that foundational stone in our life. I mean, we started beating one another up, you know. We'd say things, say something wrong, and, and PK would say, well, do you want me to agree with that? You know how handy wives are. They're always able to help you, you know, with your deficiencies. Hmm? Proverbs 18.21 says that death and life are in the power of your billfold. Your title. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And which, whichever one of those you uh, seem to love the most, that will be the fruit that you'll bear. You talk death, you'll begin to see those things transpire in your life. You continue to confess things that are contrary to the word of God, they'll be able to transpire in your life. You know, it doesn't matter what happens externally. It happens what you believe and speak. Because what you believe and speak is what you're going to have. A circumstance can come across your path or a situation or something that has to be dealt with. But when you deal with it according to the Word of God, then it can never bring death into your life. It will will always reverse itself. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Jesus made that clear. He made it clear in Mark eleven twenty three 23 and 24. For whosoever shall say into this mountain, be thou, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things that he saith shall come to pass. He'll have whatsoever he saith. And then in verse 24, therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, When you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. God wants you to be able to give access or give yourself access to the desires of your heart by saying when you're praying only what you know he wants for you. That has to do with personally, most specifically, Because you can't pray his will into someone else's life. You can't do that. I mean, that'd be cool. That would be cool if you could pray his will into somebody else's life. But you can pray and release on earth the desires that you've received from him. And then they can come to pass in your life. See, they have to be, you know, where the Word of God says, delight yourself in the Lord and He'll give you the desires of your heart. Where's that in Proverbs or Psalms, babe? Huh? Psalms? Who? 37? Okay. Delight uh, Delight yourself in the Lord and He will give you the desires of your heart. Okay. He's got them up there. Mentendous. The desires God has for you 
are up there. So you delight yourself in him. Let's, you know, say you're Yasmin and, and there are things, there are things that, uh, you know, uh, in, in your heart or in your life. And you want to be sure you've got God's desires. So you spend time with him. You just, you know, you're just alone. You're, you know, driving between here and the house or wherever, or you're just taking a few minutes and, and you're just, you know, you're just kind of really loving on God, just saying, man, I'm so grateful that I am where I am. And, you know, that, uh, uh, I found about your goodness and, and on and on. And, and this time develops this relationship where he's able to, he's able to drop in uh, Yasmin or whoever, uh, these things that are perfect for her. And then she begins to realize that, you know, this is something that's strong on my heart. I, I want to do this, or uh, I know I'm going to need this to do that, or I want to be a blessing here, or whatever. Or, or I, you know, I would, really, I would really like to have that. I believe that would be a blessing. And then she has to release that. She has to release that here because it's there. Huh? How does she release that? She releases it with, with her words. So then whatsoever things you desire, I mean, all of a sudden you got this desire and you know, it's from God. Yeah. Okay. We're not talking about your, uh, Santa list. Yeah, right. yeah. Huh? We're talking about what you know, what you know between you and God. This is what, this is what he wants from me. Yeah. Hmm? Then what thing, what, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, yeah. father, I'm so grateful you've given me this desire. Yeah. It's in my heart. You've got it available, available for me. And so this is what I desire. And I believe I receive it right now when I pray. Not when I see it, when I say it. I'm receiving it right now. I don't care if it takes six minutes or six years. I believe I receive it. When I think about it from that point forward, all I say is, Father, I thank you for such and such. I thank you for such and such because I believed I received it when I prayed. Yeah, that's good. I believe it's a subtle issue. Now you've brought it into the, you've brought it into the natural realm. You've brought it out of that, uh, that uh, spiritual relationship realm into this present realm. Glory to God. That's good, isn't it? Yeah. Hallelujah. Did you guys hear that? Did you guys, I know it's kind of, it's, you're probably warm under those covers there on the couch, but, <laughs> but you know, why don't you step outside for a minute and come back in that way you won't miss anything, huh? <laughs> Get that heat knocked off of you a little bit with a little bit of, little bit of probably seven or ten degree below zero, huh? Words have faith in God. So what we see in that is that if we'll get ourselves in a position where we actually believe what we say, then things are going to begin to happen more quickly. When you believe what you say, what you say is going to happen quickly. Most especially knowing that it's either his word, which you know is settled. huh? You don't have to think twice about the word of God. It's his will. Now, if it's a desire that he's given you between the two of you, then you work it that same way. But that desire is going to have to be brought into this realm, just like the Word of God has already been in this realm. Jesus paid for these promises right here. He came to earth, and as a man, he brought these promises to pass. And it really shouldn't be difficult because this is his will written. No questions asked. Yeah, that's good. But yet the church still flounders around. And the reason they flounder around is because somebody has not had a good tight hold on their throat and gotten in their face frequently enough to shake the unbelief off of them, to shake the lazy out of them. Huh? To shake their religion out of them. So they begin to do what it's going to take. Hmm? There's a lot of religious people. Hmm? And we're going to shake them up. Not because we're mad at them. 
Not because we don't like them, because we want to give them a chance. I'm so grateful, and I guess this really brought it to a head when, uh, when uh, uh, Dr. Price passed. Just me thinking about it more seriously. About, and I could, mention, I could mention all their names that have absolutely been foundational stones in our life. And even though some of them backed off of where they originally were. What we got from them was solid. I'm not going back on what I heard from Charles Capps. I'm not going back from what I heard from Dr. Price. Mm -hmm. I'm not going back from some of the other guys that I'm not going to tell you their names. I'm not. Because I realized that we grabbed what they had. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. And we didn't put them in the God class, but we put them in as men and women of God who were solid. And he gave us these areas. God gave us and he planted them in us. So some of them, you know, there was a guy that was amazing that I, that I met. He was amazing. He loved people. I mean, this guy loved people. He was a visionary. He was well before his time as it came to uh, marketing the things of God and uh, media and all that stuff. I mean, he was just beyond his time. His love for people really struck me and his ingenuity, hmm? yeah. which... Uh, Neither one of them at the time was my strong suit. Neither loving people, <laughs> nor the ingenuity. And he was a great pastor, and he loved the people. I mean, he was made fun of. He was, he was ostracized by, by the household of faith. But you know what we got from him, what we needed to get from him. We've had men and women from this last year this last year that we, that we love and still love. But we probably got all from them we're going to get. Because, listen, if you don't do what you preach, why are you preaching? I mean, I don't, I mean none of us are walking on water, but you understand what I'm saying. You know, it's, it's one thing to, uh, to try and miss it. Versus saying, forget it and don't do it. Yeah. Right. And so, but every one of them, and, and I, I saw it so clearly that, that every one of them, they, they placed another, uh, another solid rock under our feet, which has given us, you know, given us the life that we've been able to enjoy. But at the same time, and I don't know why it's the way it is, we, we're not tempted to... Uh, What's a good word? We're not tempted to uh, compromise. Yeah. We're just not. The church can't compromise. Yeah. We're not our church by ourselves. We're the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. He is the head of the church. He has, he has written no wiggle room in the, in the word of God for us. He who knows to do and doesn't do it, yes. it's sin. Yes. And so, you know, when you get to that point uh, concerning any area of your life, you just know I, I'm not, I'm not going to compromise this. Yes. I don't care. I don't care what it. I don't care what it costs me. Yes. Hmm? Isn't that the way the church started? Yes. Hmm? That's the way it started. Yeah. All those guys, they didn't care. They didn't care. They didn't care. They didn't give a rip. Stephen, he didn't give a rip. He didn't care. He got stoned to death. I don't believe he felt one rock. I don't. I don't believe he felt one rock. Pastor, why do you think that? Because Jesus had already been to the cross and bore his pain. That's why I believe that. Why not? Why not? 
Jesus had already been resurrected. He'd already paid the price for pain. The word of God says he, he, he bore our pain. Even though Stephen didn't have that part of the Bible, that doesn't mean he wasn't going to be protected. He was a lover of God and a lover of the master and honored him. Hmm? Yeah. He honored him to the point where he, was, he said the same thing the master said when he was crucified. Father, don't hold this to their charge. He forgave, forgave him as they were picking up the rocks. I don't believe he felt a thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I think we ought to just go ahead and be all in. I think we ought to be all in. And if we face something that's really, uh, that's really, you know, challenging to us, man, we got other people around us that are all in. You know, instead of crawling in a hole or, you know, calling somebody that you know has next to zero faith, call somebody. What can we do? Let's pray together. Let's pray in the Holy Ghost. Let's see what the Bible says. You can do this. Hallelujah. Heaven Heaven belongs in our lives. And it can be there regardless of what the area is when heaven begins to be bigger to us than what the earth has to offer. Amen? 